Hello everyone, Mike Grempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Have you ever had the situation where you have a data range with multiple rows and columns and you want to find a specific entry within that range and then determine or pull from that what the column header name is? Well, we're going to see how we can do that today in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have 16 names here in four different teams, A, B, C, and D. And what I want to do via this data validation dropdown is select a name and then have it tell me what team that person is on. So what I need to do is find that name within these 16 cells or my data range and then determine what column that's in and pull in the header for that column, in this case, Team A. And the formula we're using here is an index formula. And notice it has curly brackets. So this is an array formula that's entered with Control, Shift, and Enter. So this is our formula. And I've used names in the formula to make it easier to understand. And I've identified those below. So in this case, headers is E2 to H2. And you can see the color coding there. The data, you know, those 16 names, E3 to H6. And the name that we select that I have here is the name that's in cell E8. And then what I have down here below is really the key to this to determine what column number we want to pull. Because in a typical index formula, and we can just take a look at that here, equals index, you have an array, a row number, and a column number. Now, in our formula here, notice I have, in our index, I have an array, which is the headers. And it says row number here. And that's really the balance of the formula there. But technically, that's actually the column number. Now, with an index function, if the array is a horizontal array, the data that you enter or the formula that you enter for rows, it interprets that as column. So you do not need to enter anything for the row number portion of this. You can just enter the column number portion, and it will automatically interpret that properly. I could have taken the formula here and actually entered another comma, so it leaves the row number portion blank and interprets this as the column. And if I hit Control, Shift, and Enter, notice it gives me the correct result. Or I could have even entered a 1 in here because that would be the first row, for example, and this would be the column. Again, if I hit Control, Shift, and Enter, it would still give me the correct result. But in this case, I just went ahead and ignored that first component, and Excel interprets that properly. So again, the key to this is determining the column. So what I've done is I've pulled that formula out and put it down here so we can just walk through that to see how that works. Notice here with Karen, she's in column one of that, so it returns a one. If I chose a different name, for example, Sam, I get a two. And again, two will indicate it's in team B. So what we're going to do is we are going to select this cell, which has just the that portion of the formula. And we're going to go to the Formulas tab and Evaluate Formula. And let's just walk through this and see exactly how Excel has evaluated that formula. So the first thing it's going to do is determine what is data. So if I click on Evaluate, it determined that data are the 16 names from Tom all the way to Mary. Next, it's saying, OK, what's name? Well, you can see name in this case is Sam. So if I hit Evaluate, it's going to say that it is Sam there. So it's going to say, OK, equals if, which one of these 16 equals Sam? So if we select that or evaluate that, Notice you get a series of trues and falses. In this case, there is only one true right here, which is where Sam is located amongst those 16 names. Next, in our if formula, the if true portion of it is the column data minus column E2 plus 1. So the first thing it's going to do is say, OK, what's the data of the column data? We'll evaluate that. 
and that's E3 to H6. Hit evaluate again, and it tells me that the columns of that are columns 5, 6, 7, 8, because those are columns E, F, G, and H, which on my worksheet is 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then I'm going to subtract them from that, column E2, the first one in my range. I'll say OK or evaluate. That's 5. So 5, 6, 7, 8 minus 5 plus 1. Ultimately, that's going to give me 0, 1, 2, 3 plus 1, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that's how I get my four different column numbers for my data that I have. So now Excel is going to say, OK, if all these trues and falses for 1, 2, 3, and 4. I hit evaluate, and what Excel has done is replace that one true with a 2 because that is the location of SAM within my data range. It's in the second column of my data. Now, what is the max of just that number 2? I could have used max. I could have used min. Either way, because I know the result is just going to be one number. I'll evaluate that and I get the number two. So ultimately, in my index formula, it's going to give me the range of the headers. And in this case, it will tell me it's in column two. And column two will be, in this case, team B. So again, if I selected this, went in and looked at row number, which is my formula, and hit F9, notice it just results in the number two which is my column number. And that's how easy that is to do in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy Excelling.